If you're joining us for the first time, I recommend you take a step back and watch this video series starting with episode one. Hey everyone, JP Emanuel here, and we're still hanging out at Haas Brew House with my fellow SolidWorks teammates, Brian, Mark, and Earl. And we've just pumped the wort out of our mash kettle and into our boil kettle. Now, I have to admit, this is my favorite stage, other than, of course, drinking the beer, because this is where we start giving our beer some much needed character. This step is where we begin adding a variety of different hops, which will change its overall flavor. And today we're going to be using three hop varieties, Amarillo, Centennial, and Simcoe hops, which are known for giving off a floral citrusy aroma such as grapefruit and lemon, but also produce some earthy and piney characteristics as well. So Earl, um, we were using the mash kettle um, and during the, uh, the mashing phase, now we're ready to go into the, the boil phase. How long does the boil phase typically take? Right, so the boil phase is going to take us 60 minutes where we added hops at the be very beginning to extract some of the, the bitterness out of those hops and about 20 minutes left in, those, in that 60 minutes we'll add more hops to, and to get even more bitterness but also start to add flavor to the beer and we'll add hops at the end and then once we're done we'll start to chill the beer. So I can't wait to actually taste it. Obviously it takes more than just an amazing recipe to create a great tasting beer. All this amazing equipment plays a huge role as well. The boil kettle we're using is a 15 gallon kettle that actually has a whole bunch of unique components attached to it. It has a hop stopper, a heating element, a manual temperature gauge, a temperature probe that is also connected to our cabinet, a quarter turn ball valve, quick disconnect that attaches a hose to our pumps, and not to mention all the hardware such as nuts and washers that are needed to, needed to be installed uh, to install all these components into place. So this leads me to an interesting point. How do we take all those parts, which there's a lot of them, and account for them all in our schematic? Well, you might also be thinking, why should I even bother adding all these parts, considering they're all mechanical parts anyway, right? But as soon as we connect a hose to that kettle, we've now created a point-to-point -point connection, and we should definitely consider adding this information to our schematic. And in order to do that, I want to introduce a new feature known as Super Part. Ultimately, a super part is a combination of multiple components that are typically used together to make up one master component, such as our boil kettle. The process involved in making a super part is quite simple. First, we're going to go ahead and create a new part, a new super part in our manufacturer part library. We'll then give it specific detailed information to help us easily identify it in the future. And finally, we'll include all the components we need to make up our new super part. Now the next time we need to use the boil kettle in a schematic, instead of adding a symbol, adding a part, adding another part, so on and so on, we can now insert a symbol associated and then the new super, and associate it to the new super part. This method can be extremely powerful when dealing with other types of components as well, such as maybe a multi-part connector or even a contact or auxiliary block. There's potential for some huge time savings in creating these parts, not to mention helping us remember these smaller parts when it comes time to ordering everything. And not, to men, not that I'm speaking from personal experience, but no one wants to forget all these smaller parts only to find out there's a six week lead time and now you have to explain why you're late on project delivery. You can even take this process a step further and once you've created your super part, you can also turn it into a macro just like we did in our last video, which can help cut down on design time even further. So before they finish everything without me, I have to get back to helping Earl, but there's definitely more tips and tricks that go along with super parts, as well as several other time-saving features. Just visit mysolidworks.com and search for Electric Brewery. Do you have an idea for a SolidWorks electrical how-to video? Post a comment and a team here will work on creating a valuable video for all of our users to take advantage of. If you're a fan of Twitter, you can also follow me at SweetCad, that's S-W-E-C-A-D. We'll see you next time on Brewing with Electricity, the SolidWorks Brewery.